Hi, it's Amélie. Today for just practicing, we're going to work on the Nielsen Concerto, Nielsen Flute Concerto. So uh, it's a live stream. If you have any question, you can ask them in the live chat and I'll try to answer them as like pretty much right away. Um, so was there any question before we start or we... Um, no questions yet, but um, if you can uh, tell the measure numbers and stuff, that'd be great where you are when you're playing because okay. uh, the way it's printed. Okay. I have bar numbers and bar I have numbers, letters yeah. too. I mean. yeah, yeah. So, well, I'll start from the yeah. beginning, which is bar uh, one, two, three, five. Uh -huh. Okay. It's not all slurred. Sometimes when I'm not happy with my sound, I practice all slurred, just focus on the sound as if I was doing long notes, and then I add the, um, the articulations after. stopped and I was getting at A. Okay, it's a beautiful concerto. I love it. I played it when I was um, finishing my bachelor's degree. Uh, I had a recital and uh, that was one of the pieces I played back then. Um, so the beginning it's very loud and to achieve a loud sound like that I try to make it resonate more in my chest. Like I'm not sure it's what's happening but that's what that's what I visualize. Like I open and I make it um I don't know. This way when I visualize like that it, I have more space for the sound to uh, to resonate I guess. I don't know. But um try to really make the bigger sound, the biggest sound that you can. And start by practicing it slurred because this way you can really just focus on the sound and the um, the dynamic and then after that you can add the tongue but the tongue should not disturb the way you're blowing and the way you're opening everything it's just an addition to what was already there so that's it for the beginning and then at bar nine you have this um, diminuendo so a good idea to practice the diminuendo with a with a tuner because it might want to go down especially if you don't have enough air there but breathing is pretty obvious so when you have a rest you can breathe uh one question no. okay and then your piano at 10 with the staccato there so I'm gonna work on it um... warm up and it might get better. Um, I practiced it all slurred once just uh, making sure of my sound then I made kata 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 instead of taka and then I did it again uh, double tonguing the right like the normal way but there's still something Yeah, it's, 
it's not uh, those two notes they're really at the very end two before a because the piano goes or the orchestra does 16 so like one two three four one two three four one two three ta -da -da. on the fourth you do those two notes those two thirty seconds and then I continue to after a which is 18 Obviously, it's a lot of notes to learn, so if you're learning it for the first time, you might want to take your time. Um, especially, like, there's a lot of um, accidentals and all those things, so make sure you take your time. You can use a metronome, um, I think, 100 to 112, let's see. I'm a bit under the tempo right now. I'll try it at uh, 18. To work a little bit on that um what did i want to say oh yeah so when you do that trill you have to move uh, g sharp to a sharp um you have to move two fingers you put your you put your thumb on the b flat key in the back and you move the the ring finger and the middle finger and the c sharp d sharp it's the two fingers here on the two little spatulas there. Um, I'll do it again a bit slower from from end of 21. There's a lot of E's there and E's are very um, susceptible to cracking. Try to send the air a little bit to the right. Sometimes it helps. remember how intense this was a lot of uh, a lot of work and I didn't have enough air um, a bit after 20 I think it's because I should breathe more I'll take it again from just after a at 18 you breathe a little bit uh, let's say at 30 after the first note because uh, the orchestra is holding a note I think so it should be fine 
Um, here I was not happy with... No, that was okay. I think it's something else that cracked. I didn't like 20... Uh, 23, that little... It wasn't clean, so I'm just going to practice it going back and forth. I'll just do one B plus one note there to remind, remind myself. I can practice, uh, I like to do one B plus one note a bit faster. It's easier for me to make sure I'm just doing a little part and not making a mistake. Then I did it a bit slower, all tongued. Now I'm gonna try the way it's written. Good, it's okay. Just curious, I'm gonna put a Tuner while I'm playing. Is there a question? Yeah, well, somebody was wondering, like, what's the hardest scale to memorize? Um, I don't know. What was I, so, what's the hardest scale to memorize? I would say, uh, I really don't know. <laughs> like, <You> know them <laughs> it's like, I think it's psychological when there's a lot of sharps or flats, people tend to think they're harder. I don't think that they really are. Um, and when there's a lot of sharps or flats, it's just about in your brain, instead of thinking, let's say you're doing B major, instead of thinking that F, C, G, D, and A are sharp, just think that E and B are not sharp, everything else is. So you have always tried to find the, the not laziest, but most efficient way to think about something instead of over cramming your brain with things to think about, just uh, making it the simplest possible. And I think it's about repetition. If you do it en en enough, it's gonna get easier. So, cool. yeah. Um, I'll try that. Sorry, just one second. Okay. A bit sharp. That's weird. Okay. Now someone played with that, and it's, uh, I don't know if you can take care of it. Oh, we Um, 
um, a, sharp, a flat or G sharp and you want to lower it a little bit you can add those two fingers to the of the right hand so um, the ring finger and the middle finger of the right hand and it lowers it a bit yeah so here it's very expressive the beginning is excited and all and here it's more expressive more melancholic I think breathe more um, I'll go from 40 and you see you have that accent and I don't think it's a real accent I think it's more about vibrating that note because it's not it's slurred you know so you're not putting any tongue there I don't know much um, you know taking a big big breath before that G that high G and then uh, don't go loud too fast yeah and take a, a Every time from 40 that you have a little bit of time to breathe, even if you don't need it, take a lot of air so you can get to the end of that phrase. So I'm going to take for from 49 now. And I tend to, uh, when I see a crescendo, I try to go a little bit down, uh, not down, but like a little bit uh, softer in the beginning of the crescendo so I have more space. So I'm at mezzo forte at 49 and then when I get on my B flat I try to go maybe to piano or mezzo piano so I have a little bit of space to do that crescendo. when we get to it's changing the mode here and it's pretty interesting um, I'll take from 56 I think Flat 
because when you play a high F sharp third octave and your thumb is on the on the B flat key, uh, the F sharp doesn't come out well. You see, so. And if it's difficult for you to go from, you know, triplets to 16th notes to sextuplets, then, you know, you can practice it just with a metronome and you go, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. It's easier for me in French. Un, trois, quatre, cinq, six, 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 un, trois, quatre, cinq, and make sure you know where the beats are and if you're not sure like analyze it and put little lines where the beat fall just to make sure you know where you're at with the rhythm because like a note that's on the beat and a note that's an up upbeat they don't have the same energy at all so that has to be heard okay from 58 Obviously, if I was practicing like uh, piece by piece and not not uh, doing in front of a camera, I would put my metronome and play it at different speeds slowly and then try to go faster to push myself and then go back to slowly. But I want to go and do the whole thing this morning, so I'm going to uh, not overdo it if I want to get to the end with you guys today. But... Um, Take time, take the time, you know, to subdivide with your metronome. Like you can go, uh, let's say at 100 per eight note. So at 62, it would go like this. And then a bit faster. enough for, my, for me for today that speed okay so I continue
part to the metronome not too fast practice slower and you feel that you don't have enough air maybe don't worry too much about it because when you'll go faster you might have enough air I'll do it a little bit faster is always that you do it so much that it becomes easy you don't have to think about it, and then you can focus on being expressive and uh, musicality on your sound it's a piece where I think the sound is so important making it very resonant and very expressive and it's almost aggressive I think in some parts and in some parts it's more melancholic and more um, it's a bit like um, I feel it's a bit like um a little unstable a person that's a bit unstable and is going between anger and sadness a little bit that's how i feel about that piece sometimes oh how was it okay yeah okay 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 that's that's at 83 let's see Tiam, tiam, no. Where are the beats here? Where's the beats? Um, wait. Do I have a pencil? Yes, I always have a pencil. Oops. It's. Tiam, tiam, tiam. One. Two, three, four. Okay, so it's if I subdivide, let's say I subdivide it. I'll subdivide first. simple okay so now at 91 
it so short? I'll see. Yeah, maybe like that. And a lot of timber at the end. So you have to open. Make sure you're not bringing the flute in. Like You have to have a good space between your upper lip and here the, where the air hits to have, uh, you know, to project more. If your sound is very thin, just make sure here, between here and there, there's a big, big enough space. I'll go from um, 91 or 90. I'll do it once, subdividing. that with a real orchestra one day. Yeah. It's amazing. Nice piece. One last time. try to see what what comes back what's um what's the scale that you're playing in and uh let's say here just before the you can play that as, as a technical exercise going up and down if you don't have enough time you know to learn all your pieces and do technique and all that stuff you can also use your pieces as a technical exercise you can even Cop, like make a photocopy and then cut and paste in another book that <laughs> I did that when I was doing my, my end of bachelor's degree I thought I have to learn all this and so I made my sound exercise and my technical exercise out of those out of the pieces that I had to learn for the recital because it was my first really long recital and then I decided to uh, make a section that was sound a section that was more technical and then I would use these things as a warm-up um, from my repertoire and you know I would alternate not do all of it every time but this way I also practiced my pieces you know and when the time came I really knew my stuff that can be a, a way if you don't have enough time you know to and you're trying to be efficient with it okay just before E at 108 
slower than that, huh? Tem tempo mat tranquilo. I think I'm playing it way too fast. changes the harmony there yeah make sure you think long phrase here there are so many ways to cut that phrase and go it's really a long phrase the same type of types of accents that are mis not misplaced but displaced you know they're placed in a um, interesting place and uh, just make sure you do them and ta -da -da, ta -da -da, ta -da -da, ta -da -da. and if you're not comfortable with them you have to just practice them by their own by themselves with a metronome one two three one two three one two three four one two three four one two three one two three four 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 one two you know um, I'll go from one twenty four. To bring back your pinky when you play the E. You don't have to do. You can go do. Just do. It's as you wish. Because you can leave your pinky on the C sharp 
while you play your E. This way it's less movement. Uh, you can test both and see what's more comfortable for you. bar numbers anymore but it's written solo oh, high F practice it straight once that little part with the six tuplets. Practice it again and again until it becomes easier. Oh, no, no, no. I would need to practice it more. And plus, I'm losing focus. And now I'm getting a bit more tired. sostenuto at, at uh, vivo yeah that's nice like that and I kind of get a um, How do you say that? I kind of not rest, but I put more 
weight on the first note of the sixth bass. Ta -da 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 so this way it helps me to continue and um, it's just two notes that you repeat so and it keeps me from just losing control. So now sustenuto. Any comment, question? Yeah, Good? Wait, and here it's AD. I knew that by heart when I played it for my bachelor's degree. I had a lot of time to practice back then. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um... So I'll try to do it there. I'll practice that. Okay. anymore um, and just a bit before Pumoso yeah that's it Thank you. 
know there's little spots that if uh, I was playing that with a, an orchestra and a little bit I would go back to obviously but you also have to know when it's enough for one day and that you're not gonna get much more right now like it can be the same day but a bit later too anyways it's more efficient to do it and go back more often than just stay on one spot non-stop like you have to repeat it a few times but then you also have to know when to let it go and go back later okay triplets now I shouldn't uh, just have that A short, it should be a bit longer. That's nice. Yeah, you see just that 170, that long, that, that big scale. You know, that's the same as I always say, you can play it back and forth as an exercise, just like a scale going back and forth. It's just a bit different from the scales you usually practice, but it's, you know, you can still learn it. So second movement now. Um, 100. I'll try it. Here. Wait. 
E and D sharp. It's so fast, you shouldn't move your index finger for this one. Um, yeah, and then... Yeah, so that's pretty okay. Uh, again, with that same thing when you do... Um, It's just about practicing it. It's really just a uh, E flat major scale, but you started on a B flat. It's really what it is. Uh, so now at 39 in that second movement. Just curious. Wow, that's a long concerto. Okay. focusing and I how, how long have I been doing that 58 minutes, 58 minutes? Mm -hmm. okay yeah that's why usually I after I don't know 45 minutes I go take a glass of water I don't advise people to um, practice too long like right now I don't know if it's the lights my head is a bit uh, my eyes don't I'm not seeing very well uh, yeah there's questions yeah we have questions we do a couple questions uh, but not about the piece though so maybe okay, I can finish that. Okay. I'll finish that. So you have to make sure you know where the beats are and um, I would advise you to listen to it uh, and really know because like the um, orchestra is doing 16th note so you go because it's not a you know we practice by ourselves and we should not forget that it's a piece for flute and orchestra, you know, or piano if you play it with the piano, but making sure that um, you know what's going on and also the difference when you play between a downbeat and an upbeat, it's not the same energy as I said before, the downbeat, it's where you go to, but the upbeat is going towards that, you know, and so there's this idea of almost gravity or a ball that bounces and when you're on the downbeat, the ball just touch the floor and then goes back up, you know. Okay. It's really just like 16th notes, but you could, he could have written 16th notes uh, slurred by two with a dot on the second, uh, the second one, but instead he wrote it with, with rests, which is fine, but make sure you're not doing this. Mm -hmm. 
like really think of it as a as a long phrase short or a bit longer this I'm at 80 around 80 a little bit after 80 80 I'll start from 81 Allegretto, which is try the speed that's 92 it's a bit slow but it's okay for today natural on that B flat so does he mean B flat B natural or B flat C natural I think it sounds better with a B flat B natural no it's probably a C natural because then he goes and plays a C yeah
to 133 and you have that triplet start by doing just the first note like a a a a a f f e and then you so and then you add the other note and then poco adagio 140 I'll do it a bit slower than that. 92 for now. much. Okay, so that's not too bad. I remember that part. Um, you know, don't always start from the beginning when you practice. Sometimes uh, you can do from the end. You start from the last page and you go back or at least second movement and then first movement because, um, yeah, it's more efficient that way because you, you want to know your whole piece as much the, each part, you know. So obviously, like, all that, uh, you know, practice with a metronome, you saw me do it in other parts where I went from slower to faster. So now I'm at 187 or something like that. Yeah. beats if you're not a hundred percent certain of where the beats are write them down um yeah because it's a bit like uh let's say at 204 so you have to really know your rhythm there
all subdivided. natural here. Okay. Right. What's that? Uh, I'll take from 129. change you go with four sharps I would have to work on that last part, especially when you get all those flats. Yeah, so that's it. That's okay. Like, that's what I can do for in one sitting. <laughs> Okay, so I hope this was uh, helpful. Um, if uh, you are interested in some merch, we have a lot of nice things on our store and you can look in the description below. It's all there. We have shirts and mugs and uh, nice leggings. And also we have a super nice poster with all the fingerings and the scales and the trill fingerings, major and minor scales and arpeggios. And it's very popular. It's amazing. You can put it in your practice room and you have it there for, you know, reference. And if you want some lessons with me, you can email us at info at the food channel .com. You can have a lesson every week and buy a bundle, but you can also just have one lesson and see where you're at. And I can help you uh, make a little 
program for yourself or see what you should work on. Um, so that's that. If you are looking for a flute, uh, you can use our code TFC with uh, the Flute Center of New York. And this code gives you some perks like longer warranty and you can try more flutes, but it also helps us out. So thanks to everyone who used our code already. And so it's TFC and you can go on the, their, their um, website, flutesforsale.com. So flutes number four sale.com. And we also have a Patreon and you can go on there and tip us or you can pay um, $2 a month and have access to our live podcast so the podcast is available for everyone but if you want to be in the live version and you can ask questions and all that stuff it's on patreon thanks to all our patrons who help us out to produce that for you guys so cool we have some questions some questions now sammy wants to know uh any tips on how to adjust your embouchure between playing piccolo and flute i've never played piccolo before but i've heard that the embouchure is smaller okay so how do you adapt from going to flute and, uh, and piccolo um yeah the embouchure is smaller on the piccolo so you have to um you have to um support well because if you stop supporting it's very obvious right away and the articulation is not so good but it's it's pretty similar and i would say that for me playing the piccolo makes my flute sound better i think you know it's just a question of practice for me it's not the embouchure as much as my arms feel weird being in one spot and then being here and but usually it takes me a few seconds you know if you have usually if you play two instruments you have a couple of bars to pick it up and you know feel it and get used to to the new feel of it so maybe the only tip i could give you is if you have to change let's say you're in orchestra and you switch from flute to piccolo as soon as you can do the switch with the instrument that you're gonna play so you can you know feel where you're at with it but it's really practicing and it should be like it shouldn't be a big big problem we have a video about piccolo like for little tips for the piccolo so you could check that out if you never played the piccolo and you want to see okay uh captain obvious wants to know what's the uh difference with offset g uh e foot C foot or inline G. What's the okay, so offset G is just the G key here with the left hand is a bit uh, forward. So this way you don't have to reach with your fourth finger with your um, ring finger. It's a bit more ergonomic. Some people like it. Um, I'm used to inline, so I'm not changing because I got used to it and I don't have pain, so I keep it like that. But some people who have pain prefer it like that, or some people who begin just pick that and then. Um, so that's it for the inline and upline. Inline is the one that's really inline, and upline is the more ergonomic version. And then the C foot and B foot, it's just here on my flute, I have my flute has this much more than if I was playing a C with a C foot. So if I had a C foot, it would stop here, and I would stop with C, and now I have a little bit more, so I can play a B because the longer your instrument, the uh, lower you can go. So that's just it. Cool. Um, what's the best flute for intermediate? What's the best flute for intermediate? Oh my, there's a lot of choice, you know. You can go on um, on the Flute Center of New York website and at flutesforsale.com and check uh, with your budget. And there's a lot of good flutes out there. Like it's very difficult for mm -hmm. me to... Uh, say because also something that might be more comfortable for you maybe i wouldn't sound as good on it uh -huh. and it's it's how it sounds and it's how it feels uh -huh. as well how easy it is for you to get things out on, on a specific flute so uh, with the flute center of new york you can try up to four flutes i think yeah, so cool, yeah. and like if none of those four flutes suit you you send them back and you can get four other ones uh -huh. you know and try them so yeah, they're, yeah they're there's a lot good, of good yeah. things mm -hmm. uh, out there yeah, a lot of good flutes and there there's also used there's new like there's a lot of options mm -hmm. so you should check with y your needs yeah uh, run wild forever he wants to know what brand do you advise for marching band also does your hand cramp up when playing okay so does my hand cramp up when playing no it doesn't cramp up yeah. i have i don't have pain in my hands i used to have a lot of pain in my neck because i had bad posture and i had a like a forward head like that I was 
bringing my head to my flute instead of my flute to my head mm-hmm. um you know and now it's pretty okay uh sometimes i get a little thing here if i play a long time and you know in some conditions mm-hmm. but it's pretty rare just mm-hmm. now i think my neck is hurt forever in a way because i heard it so badly that even if it's better now uh, it was so bad before that you know so that was this question and flutes for marching band yeah. well marching band is outside huh? Yeah. so i think like a flute that's a bit like the what's the nuovo, the water, yeah, the nuovo, nuovo. Student flute that's yeah that we, just we did we reviewed a flute that's in plastic and is I played it in the shower, you know. Well, I we had the shower on it, and then I played it, played fine. Mm-hmm. I would advise that for marching band. Yeah. First, it's very light, and since you're walking around with mm-hmm. your flute, that's like that's smart. And then if there's rain or anything, you don't stress about it. It's not that expensive. So if yeah. you have a good metal flute, that's like that's worth two thousand dollars. You don't want to bring a two thousand dollar flute mm-hmm. outside. Even and you know, there, even also sometimes you can have people. You know touch your instrument while you're moving and yeah so i think that would be a good choice for marching band and it plays okay it actually plays okay and i think you told me nicola that they have a um, warranty with that yeah, flute it's all in the description in that video it's so really awesome warranty there's a very good warranty on that flute so check in the description of the video that we did about that flute and um i think it's a good choice for marching band was there any more questions yeah more questions um is it beneficial to learn music by heart? Is it beneficial to learn music by heart? Um, yes and no. I think, like, I think if you practice enough something, like, you'll know at least big parts of it by heart. Um, I used to love playing by heart because I was under the... Imp- I felt that I was being more musical because it was as if I was improvising it. It was more coming out of me and my ears were more available when my eyes were not involved so i was listening more to myself and to uh the the piano or the orchestra or the other instruments i was playing with now i don't feel that i need it as much to be aware of the of what's going on uh, sound wise um but i think it's it's a good thing you know to learn by heart to learn little things by heart but it shouldn't feel like it's it's the goal it in it it's a goal in itself like people didn't use to learn by heart that much it's a thing that started during the romantic era with list and pianists like that and then it became a big thing and that's you know people were were improvising before that and spending more time learning to improvise and all those things and then when virtuosity and impressing with memory and all those things came along we got rid of of that part of music and yeah you know there's so much more to music than being impressive oh she knows it by heart or he knows it by heart um, but if it helps you be more expressive or if you feel more free that can be that can be something interesting for you it's it all depends what's the goal of, of the of learning by heart mm. but I think it's not bad and I think it's it's fun you know and even when I don't play by heart I usually know pretty much all of it by heart and so my music is just um just a safety net you know but i don't even have to put it that close to me i can put it a bit lower and i'm just looking here and there but it's not as um because if you play if you practice a lot at one point your fingers just go on their own so in reality you know it by heart Mm -hmm. um do you have any tips uh patrick wants to know do you have any tips on playing the third octave g they always have a struggle playing it Okay, Trip, tips to play the high octave G. Really three finger G, I guess. Yeah. Maybe, maybe if you have issues, are you doing the right fingering? It's like the other G's, but you remove the thumb. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Usually people have more issues with the F sharp and the E, so it's funny that you say the G is more difficult mm-hmm. for you. Maybe you should have your flute checked by a technician. I don't know. Because mm-hmm. like, or maybe you're you're adding a finger that mm-hmm. shouldn't be there. Mm-hmm. Um, just make sure because G is not the hardest note in the third octave. Like usually people have difficulties with E and F sharp. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. but like high high notes, you can check our video about high notes. I mm-hmm. think it's pretty 
well done and might help you in general with your high notes. Uh, Stacy wants to know any tips on flutter tonguing. I can't do it to save my life. Yes, I know. Practice. <laughs> flutter tonguing. Yeah. yeah. For, for some people, it's very difficult. You have to learn to do the sound with your throat. So you can gargle. You can just try. Like you don't need your flute really. As once you'll be able to do, you can just do it while you're playing. So. Um, when I have a difficulty with a thing like that, I do it all the time. I do it while I wash the dishes, while I take a walk, like maybe not in public places too much, but whatever, you know, and at first it might be, but at one point you'll, you'll be able to do it, I guess, you know, just keep at it, but you don't need your flute. So just once every few hours, you know, remind yourself to try it and don't go like if it's, uh, difficult for you don't do it for hours on hand just mm -hmm. do it for two minutes here and there and at one point it should block you know uh, last one uh, strange notations wants to know how can i articulate lower notes better okay how to articulate lower notes better i would say okay when you play in the low register your the air has to go through all the the whole flute so it's it's a bit slower to respond so you have to um um anticipate a little bit and also make sure you keep everything open sometimes people tend to do this and then the angle is not good anymore the angle has to stay the same this way and then when you practice your articulation practice it in the low register instead of the high register so you can practice just things like that you know i practice different articulations all slurred then i put a little bit of air then i separate with air only then i add ka 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 then ta 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 and it's really like keep it open and anticipate a little bit more when you're in the low register and make sure you're not because the air is also going slower and make sure your tongue is not in the way so your tongue is there and you release that's when you get the ta and that's when um, the sound comes out so make sure you take your tongue out of the way when you play yeah that would be my my advice for that cool. is there any more questions no, it's all good. Okay, that's cool. So that's it. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you liked the video, please like it. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and leave us comments. We love it. And see you next time. Thanks for watching.